Hi and welcome to this video consisting of a reading and reflection on this Wednesday the 20th of May. This is just a chance for you to listen to scripture, perhaps to reflect upon it and then to hear some of my own ponderings about that reading. If at any point, please feel free just to pause this video and maybe just stop and reflect and go through it in your own time. You might also like to use the collect, the reading and the reflection during your own daily prayer cycle. And orders of service can be found on our website to aid you in that. So we begin. The Collect in the week after the sixth Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us, he may raise us to eternal joy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading is from the Gospel according to Luke, the seventh chapter, verses one to ten. The Faith of the Centurion When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion's servant, whom his master highly valued, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, he pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves to have you do this, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to him. Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. This is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. And that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. It might sound like stating the obvious, but Jesus continues to surprise. Just when you think you have him sussed, and know how he is going to answer or resolve a situation, he pulls the rug from under you and does something that can only make sense to a king who dies on a cross. The faith of the centurion is one such example, I think. Here you have a group of people appealing for help on behalf of someone with power, with a conversation that seems to turn to manipulation and abuse of status. 
there's this servant, there's this centurion rather, who's worried about his servant. He hasn't come to meet Jesus, of course, but instead just sends some Jewish speakers to appeal to him on his behalf. Jesus must do something, surely, because this man built a temple and loves the Jewish race, don't you know? It almost sounds that Jesus owes it to the centurion to respond. He's a philanthropist. It would be wrong not to help, for he is special and important. Knowing that Jesus is often critical of status, power and those in authority, this is where you might expect Jesus to turn around and tell them all to clear off, perhaps giving a pithy comeback of why the centurion didn't make the effort himself. And yet, this is not what we get. It's almost the complete opposite. For Jesus goes along with them, and after hearing a message delivered this time by the centurion's friends, Jesus is amazed so much that the servant is healed. Note that the centurion and Jesus do not meet at all in this story. There is no direct conversation between the two of them. And despite neither going near the servant nor conversing with the person asking for help, the servant is healed. It's all very curious, and it seems that Jesus' action and response seems to be out of character. However, that's not the case at all. And it seems to draw attention to the fact that it is us who lacks faith and understanding. That Jesus is so much more inclusive and compassionate than we often want to accept. For the heart of this story is not the healing of the servant itself, but it is merely the framework for what Luke wants to highlight. What matters is the centurion's faith. Most centurions, middle-ranking military officers, often responsible for soldiers whose main task is attempting at keeping peace, would despise the local people as an inferior race. But this man didn't. He had come to love and respect the Jewish people and had even paid for the building of their local synagogue. We are presented with a humble, genuine Gentile we don't seem to grasp this. Perhaps because of our worldly cynicism, we get the wrong end of the stick, thinking that the centurion is being somewhat manipulative in sending others. But in fact, he is showing immense respect and humility in the sending of the two groups of messengers to Jesus. So Jesus is astonished at all this, and we are astonished at his astonishment. Normally in the Gospels, Jesus does and says things that surprise people. Yet here is one of the very few places where Jesus himself is surprised. The reason being is the quality of of the centurion's faith. And this faith isn't one that is abstract, but is a simple, clear belief 
that when Jesus commands something to be done, it will be done. In many respects, the centurion seems to regard Jesus like a military officer with authority over sickness and health. If Jesus says that someone is to get well, well, they will. Unlike the scribes and Pharisees, even his own disciples, the centurion, a Roman Gentile, knows precisely who Jesus is. The Son of God. And that through Jesus, anything is possible. Luke is a very skillful literary editor here because he weaves a story that underlines Jesus' mission was not only for the Jews, but was for the entire world. The servant, an outcast, is healed, and the faith of the centurion is so strong. And it also reveals Jesus' own divinity, his generosity and inclusivity. All the while, our perception of Jesus is being challenged. Think you know Jesus? Perhaps we should think again. Amen.